Hey everyone, in this tutorial we'll take a look at programmatically modifying some of our control properties. So this is the fun part, we actually get to some code. Uh, just a quick tangent, you know, when I speak to employers oftentimes, I've heard uh, in the last couple of years, you know, students really know how to code, but they don't always know the GUI stuff, and that's such an important part of coding these days. You know, we're not really writing many applications that run at the command prompt. Most things are done uh, with a GUI interface and events and buttons that we click and events are fired off. Uh, so learning the GUI is le learning the GUI aspect of development is, is so important. I encourage you to really dive deep into that. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, off the tangent and take a look at uh, how we can use Visual Studio to add some controls and then how to get into code that is uh, executed when an event associated with that control is fired off. So let's go ahead and add a couple controls again. We're going to click on our toolbox and we'll just add a couple labels. Here's a little trick if you add a control and left click, do a control C, control V, and you can duplicate that, that control. I'll add two labels. And then let's add a couple buttons and we'll just associate some events with those buttons. Again, I'll hit control C, control V to duplicate the buttons. And we'll say button one. Um, and we'll say make visible or change visible. <clears throat> button two, we'll say close. And we'll use the close button to close the close the form dialog. <clears throat> okay, and just add some instructions at the top of our form. Most most dialogs have some simple instructions on what to do. So I'll say um, in this form, click change visible to hide label two. Press close to exit the dialog. And we'll change that auto size property and just size it ourselves here. Okay, and then label two is what we're going to actually modify from our code. And we'll say, can you see me? <clears throat> Okay, so Visual Studio makes it almost too easy to implement code uh, for our controls, and it, it has something called it a default event handler for each control. So from our design win designer window here, if we double click on a control, it's going to generate code for that default, what it considers the default event for that control. Notice we can also get to the code by right-clicking on the form and clicking the view code option in our right-click right menu. I'm going to go ahead and double click change visible here and notice that, oops, I already did this, so I'm going to delete that. It generates some, some code for us and let's take a look at the code. So since this is the first time into our code, let's take a look at the whole thing. First we've got a class header and that class is defined for the form itself. Notice that it has the name of the form. Form first form is what we called the, the form. Uh, that's the name property for the form. And public class First form defines the class. It's the beginning of our class. Uh, and then it ends. You see Visual Studio, Studio is going to help you along the way at every point. If you click on public class, it shows you the end of the class indicated here, down here by the end class statement. Now, you might be familiar with C Sharp or C++ or Java, uh, where a class starts with an open curly brace and ends with a closed curly brace. Uh, Visual Basic is a little bit different in syntax in that way. Uh, our code blocks are defined uh, with an opening uh, he header statement and then ends with this end statement typically. Notice the end class statement ends our uh, form first form class. And then also this uh, sub procedure which was generated as the default event handler for our button ends with an end sub statement. So there's no close curly, open curly brace, close curly brace uh, to define the, the body of our button one click procedure here. 
Another thing that to notice is uh, in the subheader uh, it gives us a name. It, it gave us gave us this underscore one because I already had a button one click if, yeah, sub procedure defined. Uh, then it has a parameters list just like any language. Um, our sub procedures and functions has a parameters list. And then this handle statement. And this handle statement indicates what type of event that's already defined by Microsoft, what type of event uh, is going to fire off this sub procedure. So we can use autocomplete here and see that the button control has a whole lot of different events uh, associated with it. You know, we can do. Uh, mouse events, we can use mouse events, key events, uh, so there's a whole lot of different events that we can use. We'll use the default click event to demonstrate some code. Okay, so all we want to do is we want to change the label property. There is, I want to note, there is this uh, form object that you can get at, form, what did we call it again, first form. You don't want to use that if you're referencing the same form. You'd either use the me keyword or you can, or nothing to access controls on the form for the class that you're in. Um, so we're going to just say label two, which is the label that we want to change. Um, if you're accessing another form, then you would reference that using the, the, the name of the form. Okay, we just want to change this simple Boolean property visible. We're going to say false. And that's it. We've added a button click handler uh, and I'll, we're going to change that label uh, from visible uh, to hidden here using the visible boolean property visible. So I'm going to save it and run it and let's see what it does. Notice uh, my two label controls and clicking on change visible hides that label. And that's it. Notice our close uh, button does nothing at this point. Let's change that real quick. Go back to design. Again, to generate our sub-procedure for the click event, we double click on the close button. And this time we are going to use the me keyword, which refers to the form that we're in, or form first form. And we're going to say me.close. So that's a, a method. Um, oops, what am I doing here? I'm trying to go too fast. Me.close. And uh, notice it has it, adds the parentheses for you. I almost manually added them. Uh, but if we select the procedure here and then hit enter or double click it from the autocomplete list and hit enter, it'll generate those uh, parentheses for us. Indicating that we are calling a method or procedure. Okay, so I can go ahead and save this now and run it and if we click the change visible again, it's going to change the visibility of our label. If we click the close button, it actually closes the form dialog. That easy. So just with a couple clicks, we can add event handlers and we can add code uh, that will be executed uh, when that event occurs. So we added this button click uh, event to our change visible button and a button click event to our close button. Uh, and then executed some code within it. So real easy to add some uh, event handlers to our form controls. Thanks.